I didn't initially think that this topic was going to be that controversial, but after reading several meta-analyses and systematic reviews, it's not as straightforward as I'd imagined. Lucky for you, I did the heavy lifting, breaking my back on a two kilo dumbbell, and did the work for you. So, do eggs cause heart disease? First, I ran across this analysis wherein the researchers looked over 27 studies and pooled the data into forest plots. They look like this. Essentially, the studies are on the left, including the samples of people and the outcomes of interest, in this case, all forms of cardiovascular disease, and the numbers correspond to the differences between consuming multiple eggs per day versus eating one or no eggs per day. If the numbers are negative, that means that they indicate reduced risk of cardiovascular disease with greater consumption. If positive, then the opposite. Now, that's a lot of numbers, so we can simply turn to the boxes, which are a simple visual representation of the numbers. If the black boxes move to the left, it indicates favorable outcomes of more egg consumption. And if to the right, then less egg consumption is better. That's all relative to that middle line. Again, though, we're still stuck scratching our head in confusion because that's still a lot of boxes, i.e. data, to try to decipher at once. In that case, we can turn to the diamond at the very bottom. It represents all the boxes, i.e. data from all the studies averaged together. And it seems to be pretty squarely in the middle. And the statistics indicate a hazard ratio for you stats knowledgeable of 0.99. That squarely indicates greater egg consumption has no negative or positive effects in respect to cardiovascular disease. Okay, so this analysis indicates a relatively neutral effect, fine, but there are other analyses, even larger ones, that indicate otherwise. So what do they show and why are they different? For example, this one which actually tells us a lot of information, but for one, they looked at the stepwise increase in egg consumption, meaning with each two egg increase, does risk change? So let's look at that here. We can see that the cardiovascular disease risk on the vertical axis, anything over 1.0 is increased risk, and we see the stepwise increase in egg consumption per week on the horizontal axis. The dark line is the best estimate of the results, and the dotted lines on either side are essentially error bars called confidence intervals. They indicate where the true value or result might actually be. I think overall you'd agree that there seems to be a slight downward shift indicating a slightly reduced risk. The researchers indicated that consuming up to six eggs per week is associated with reduced risk. So the results seem to indicate so far that egg consumption either has no relationship or a mild improving relationship with cardiovascular disease. We even see that hold true when looking at coronary heart disease and stroke risk. However, now I'd like to crank the heat up a little bit and make us uh, sweat because what if I show you this? What is happening here? Heart failure shows a dramatic upward trend, clearly indicating worse heart failure risk with greater egg consumption. I don't know about you, but I don't want any of that. Suddenly everyone starts playing hot potato with the egg. No, you take it. No, you take it. <laughs> well, I won't pretend that I wasn't initially pretty confused by this data, but there are a number of potential explanations. But believe it or not, that data isn't even the scariest that I ran across. I'll show you what I mean in just a bit. So why would heart failure go up, but other forms of cardiovascular disease go down or stay about neutral? My guess, and allow me to be clear, this is only a guess, is that heart failure has many causes that are not accounted for in this analysis. Keep in mind, these relationships are unadjusted, so we're not taking into account people's other health habits or otherwise. And it's exactly to that point that we can lean on some of the data provided by the researchers to offer a morsel of evidence in favor of my point of view. If we look at the subgroup analysis, which means that the researchers separated out people based on a particular characteristic and reassessed the risk, we find something potentially telling. 
Here, we're looking at the data separated out by sex, so men and women, and diabetes status. We're focused on the heart failure grouping on the far right. And you'll notice that the risk for women is, well, non-existent, and the risk for men is about neutral. On the other hand, those with diabetes, that's men and women combined, have elevated risk. So is it possible that once we account for diabetes, that heart failure risk drops significantly? It's possible. However, this subgroup analysis was limited to four eggs per week, not the full eight. So if this risk increases when we look at eight eggs, we can't say because the researchers don't have that data, unfortunately. Okay, so as a reminder, I am not spitting fact. I'm spitting possible explanations, nothing more. Either way, the majority of the data from this meta-analysis indicates either improved or neutral effects of egg consumption, even at higher consumption on heart disease as a whole. Now, people will often throw the who funded it card at me, and sometimes that's a good argument. The two analyses that we just went over were either publicly funded or had no funding, nor any ties to industry, egg boards, and so on. However, the systematic review that I'm about to briefly touch on has multiple researchers who are funded by the egg board. And before you roll your eyes with the expected, here we go, let me guess. They think that eggs are the most perfect food on earth. I'll have you know that it is through this review that I found out about studies indicating eggs are a cardiovascular disease risk. That's right the egg board funded researchers wrote a review against eggs. I can hear the shattering of reality for people who think that funding is always an immediate bias. It can be, but not always. To be fair, they were also funded by the Almond Board of International Nut and Dried Fruit Council. I'm not making this up, I promise. <laughs> now, imagine the eggs versus nuts and fruit war. Uh, if an egg got into a fight with an almond, who do you think would win? To be honest with you, I think the almond, simply because of the density is much greater. And the egg can shatter at any moment, even if it's, well, technically bigger. Remember Humpty Dumpty? Anyway, the, the people that hate my sidetracked ideas are probably uh, finishing up a frustrated comment right as I uh, speak here. But go ahead and post it, I promise. I'll ignore it. But let's get back to the main question that you have. You're probably wondering how we can have these massive analyses indicating that eggs are beneficial or at worst neutral. And here we have research indicating that they are associated with heart disease. Well, I couldn't close the book on this without also acknowledging the contrary studies. So if we pop open one of these analyses, we see yet another meta-analysis of many studies. And interestingly, it shares some of the same features as the previous ones. For example, the researchers wanted to limit the analysis to people who were free living and not bed bound in a hospital. So they removed all studies looking at people in very poor health. The same thing with the previous analyses. They also looked at the same study types, so prospective studies. Now, knowing some of those similarities, we'd expect that the results to also indicate neutral or positive effects of consuming eggs. But as I already mentioned, that's not the case, as we see here. This is uh, similar to cardiovascular disease as in the previous analyses, although this one is looking at mortality, and the other looked at overall cardiovascular disease. The distinction is that the previous analysis included people who survived events like heart attacks. Anyway, Let's put both of them up for a moment. We recognize the overall downward trend in one indicating slight benefit to heart disease risk with increasing egg consumption. And we now see the overall upward trend in this new analysis indicating increased risk. <laughs> so what gives? Again, this is an educated guess, so please bear that in mind. And I'm certainly open to other possibilities if you have any thoughts. If you dig into the subgroup analyses of this newest analysis, they did an adjustment, just like the previous with diabetes, and that adjustment wasn't for diabetes, but for blood cholesterol, dyslipidemia, and taking medications for dyslipidemia. That means 
that they separated out the studies that adjusted for these variables and those that didn't. What they ended up determining is that the studies that did adjust for these variables indicated increased cardiovascular disease related mortality, what we just saw. However, the data that was not adjusted did not show a relationship between egg consumption and cardiovascular disease mortality. So think about that for a moment. Why would one still show this relationship and the other not? My guess is that you are adjusting for dyslipidemia and those that take medication to control their dyslipidemia, you are likely using data from people who are more than just dyslipidemic as a health problem, meaning they have high blood pressure, they may be diabetic, they may be consuming a different overall diet, the list goes on. So while the adjustment may control for that symptom, high blood fats, dyslipidemia, it does not account for everything else. However, if the other data did not need to be adjusted, it might be because these individuals already have inherently better blood markers and are likely overall healthier. This is different from the previous analysis because in that they adjusted for an entire disease like diabetes, which includes more than just dyslipidemia. Anyway, it's simply a hunch. I have no data to back that other than the adjusted analysis indicating no risk anymore. Oh, and the researchers themselves acknowledge the certainty of the data is very low, which doesn't exactly impose confidence. All right, but we're not off the hook yet because there's something else I'd like for you to hear uh, if you'll hang out with me a bit longer. I know that it's been a while already. Across both contradictory analyses that we just went over, all studies looking at people in Asia indicated only reduced risk of cardiovascular disease from eating eggs, as opposed to in the United States and Europe, which had mixed results. There are obviously many potential explanations for that, but I do find the consistency across analyses interesting in regard to Asian people. Is it a way that the eggs are being prepared, uh, the eating habits, lifestyle habits, the possibilities are really endless? Still, it provides another small piece of proof that eggs may not be inherently cardiovascular disease promoting within reason. Now, why do I say that within reason? Well, we know that eggs do raise low density lipoprotein LDL levels as evidenced by these 17 randomized control trials, but the effect is mild, usually increasing LDL by five to about 10 points. In general, that's a concern because higher LDL is linked to cardiovascular disease. Now, additionally, eggs contain choline, which can be converted by our gut microbiome to a molecule called trimethylamine, TMA, which is then further converted to TMAO, which is also linked to cardiovascular disease. However, the researchers argue that these effects may be too mild and the overall benefit of eggs also contain plenty of other molecules like unsaturated fats, phospholipids, carotenoids, and more may lead to a net positive. So unless you are a hyper absorber of dietary cholesterol and especially sensitive to saturated fat, the evidence is leaning more heavily in favor of eggs being at the very least neutral to cardiovascular disease, even if it's still unclear what the exact amount is that may cause issues. And having studies that adjust for many factors simultaneously would be great to see as opposed to these single adjustments that we've been using here. So I wouldn't be overly worried, but I'll tell you what has me worried. The contents of this next video, and if almonds were to beat eggs in a fight, what do you think? Mm -hmm.